Hi guys, welcome back to the 14 day photo artist journey. Ooh, we're getting close. We're, we're kind of wrapping and I've got a really, really incredible guest today that I'm super excited about. Um, you guys are going to be really excited too. We're going to learn a lot today. Um, but before we get into that, just in case you're just joining us or perhaps you've forgotten, I'm going to remind you of a few things. And we know that I'm not good at memorizing things, so I'll set myself up with notes. I always got my little notes so that I'm ready. So the 14-Day Artist Journey, this has been incredible. It's been such an amazing experience for me, and I hope that we've brought you guys a ton of value as well. Um if you haven't done it yet, make sure that you go to the 14 day photo artist journey and register because pro Prince, who is an amazing supporter of artists is giving everyone a, everyone who signs up for the photo artist journey. And it's not too late to sign up. You can still sign up now. Um, everyone who signs up for the 14 day photo artist journey gets a 20 by 30 canvas wrap print, which is amazing. Thank you again, pro Prince, for doing that for everyone. Um, you also want to download the book that I writ I've written, um, and it's a companion journal to everything that we're doing. And in that book, we talk about the 14, or we talk about, you know, the process of this journey, right? So there's four phases in this journey. Phase number one is self-awareness, right? That's where we start. So we have to take stock of the things that we're really good at, the things that we're brilliant at, the places where we really flourish. And we need to give ourselves props for that. We need to be kind to ourselves. We need to hold those things in high regard um, and cherish them. And we use those to kind of combat when we're feeling a little off, right? The second thing we need to do in this self-awareness and taking stock is we need to look at the things that maybe are holes in our skill sets, which it's okay to have holes in your skill sets. That's not a bad thing. None of us are perfect. We're not all perfectly well-rounded, right? So we need to know where those are because if we don't know where they are, we can't work on them. And then we need to look at obstacles, whether they are perceived or they are real. And we need to learn how to get them out of our way, whether they're perceived or they're real. So whether it is changing, you know, negative feedback loops in your head that don't belong to you, um, or they are true obstacles that you have to work past. Either way, we have to work past them. And I've said this a million times over this 14-day photo artist journey, nothing on the outside changes unless we're able to change the inside. Can't change the inside unless we are aware. So this is our foundation. This is incredibly important. So this is phase one, right? Phase two is learning about vulnerability and understanding that being vulnerable isn't, um, it has a negative connotation. Vulnerability has a negative connotation. Um, I think we think of it as being open to attacks or weaknesses, and, and it can mean that, but the way that we're talking about vulnerability, the way that we're experiencing vulnerability is being willing to be open. And when you're willing to be open and vulnerable, that's when all the beautiful things in life can happen and come your way. So talk about vulnerability. We've learned about vulnerability in, in this journey. Um, and we make an agreement with ourselves to show up and to be vulnerable. So the third phase in the photo artist journey is bravery, right? And mental fortitude. So again, I, when I was younger, I used to think that brave people, the people who went out and did the big, bright, bold, beautiful things in the world um, were just amazing. Um, you know, I, I was always in awe when I was younger of these people who were just kind of otherworldly. They just, they did the things that I'm like, how do they do that? That's so frightening. I can't imagine going out there and doing that, but they just do it. Like they're not afraid and they do it. And I have many people that I look up to that, that I thought that about. And then somewhere in my twenties, I realized, well, wait a second, they're not going out there and doing this stuff in the absence of fear. They're actually doing it in the presence of fear. They're doing it in the presence of discomfort. They're going out there and they're doing things that they're a little afraid to do, but they're going to do it anyways. And 
that's what being brave is. And that's what enables you to go out in the world and do those big, bold, bright, beautiful things that you want to do. Um, and actually, you know what? They don't even have to be big. They can be small too. Um, they're just, they're beautiful by nature, right? Because you're out there doing things in the world that make you a little uncomfortable, um, but you're doing it anyways. So through the journey, we learn to start stepping outside of our comfort zone and doing things that make us a little bit uncomfortable um, or we're a little afraid of. And that starts building mental fortitude. And every time you do that, it makes it a little bit easier to do it the next time. And we we have failures and we learn from them and we have wins and we hold on to those and we build that mental fortitude and it's awesome, right? So that is what we're doing. So this is a continuum. It's a th it, like these three things, we do them on a regular basis and it's almost like reprogramming your mind. Once you've done it, um, it's not like a one and done kind of thing. So you're not off the hook. You don't do it just one time and then it's done. It's a practice. It's something that you do on a regular basis. Lord knows I do it almost every day. There's always something that comes up where I have to kind of work through these things. I, I can't remember a day in recent times where I haven't had to do that. So, um, and it's a good thing to do. It makes it makes dealing with, you know, everything that's coming at you in life a lot easier when you do that. So this becomes a practice. We do this on a regular basis. And once we're doing that, then we can create our unique vision and start executing on it, right? We're more clear about who we are. We're more clear about where we need to grow. We're willing to be vulnerable and we're being brave and we're stepping out there and doing it sometimes in big ways and sometimes in small ways. And it doesn't really matter if it's big or if it's small, doing it, showing up for yourself and doing it. That is the important part. So now we've got this solid foundation where we can start building the kind of life that we want to build. And by the way, once you have that vision, uh, I don't want you guys to think that it stops there because things are constantly evolving and changing. That's being human and that's growing. So my vision a year ago is considerably different than what my, what my vision is today. My vision 25 years ago, 30 years ago, oh my God, like I would have never thought that I would be where I am right now, like not in a million years. Um, I thought I was gonna be a professional model and dancer. Had a kid, things changed. Um, thought I was gonna be a creative, couldn't manage that, had to go into corporate America. Did fantastic in corporate America. Didn't think I was ever going to leave corporate America and got tired of it and decided I wanted to be a creative again. So, you know, this vision part, it changes and it's okay for it to change and it's okay for you to grow and for those things to evolve. That's, they should be evolving. Um, but we want to start with that foundation and start building that vision, the life that we want to be living right now. And as we continue growing, that might change. And that is totally OK. Um, it's all all of it is OK. Right. So that's what we're doing. Um, there are a couple of things I want to go through really quick before we start talking to our guests. I want to thank again, our brand supporters, um, and you guys will be getting an email with all of the codes. Again, everyone gets a 20 by 30 canvas wrap print from pro prints, um, backdrops by Jeremy Ellsworth. There's a 10% discount. That discount is P A J 10. Again, you'll be getting a discount on or, or email about it. Stella pro kits are currently on sale. I just bought my first one recently and I'm super stoked about it. You guys can go check it out, but they're also going to be giving away a prize to one of the winners for the challenge. Um, myself personally, um, for the Art of Emotion class that's coming up, um, we have a discount code for that. We're giving you guys $800 off. AIBP is doing a 10% discount off as well. Homespun Hearts is doing a 10% discount um, tailored body jewelry is doing the same. And again, all of this will go out via email. Um, I want to thank all of the speakers who have taken the time to be with us. Um, Lacey Morgan, Kiate, Sean Black, uh, Maria, Ara, oh, I can never do it. Sorry, Maria, Betsy McHugh Gibson, my daughter, Sakar Raven Birdsong. If you guys didn't catch that interview, you should go back and check it out. That was fun. Um, uh, Aphrodite Maid and today's guest, Leon Johnson. And 
I want to let you guys know that, let's see, we start accepting submissions for your projects. And those projects can be, they can be previous projects where you stepped outside of your comfort zone. That's fine. Or they can be a project that you're working on now. Um, where you've used like the four phases of the photo artist journey and you're going to step outside of your comfort zone and do something different. Um, and we're accepting submissions April 23rd through the 27th. And then we'll be judging images from the 30th to the 4th. And the winners are going to be announced on the 5th. Now this is open to all portrait photographers. So there's not a particular genre that you have to work in. It can be any type of portraiture that you want. Um, and then today on this call, someone is going to be getting a 32 by 48 canvas wrap from ProPrints. You just need to be on the call when I when I announce the winner and be active uh, in this conversation with Leon and I. So with that, I am going to bring in my awesome guest who's so accomplished and amazing and handsome and a brilliant artist and rad and all of the good stuff, um, Leon. And here we go. Hey there, sir. How are you this morning? Hey, I'm doing well. I'm, I'm waiting for this uh, awesome and handsome guest that you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> He's right there. He's right there, bud. Um, and that, that, that portrait behind you is just beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. I, I thought maybe to have something, you know, an example, because all the time I think we as photographers and artists will say, hey, yeah, I'm a photographer. But people have no context, you know, of what you do. And so I think always your work is always a great business card to introduce I, yourself. Yep. I could not agree more. I need to do something about putting some of my work up behind me, maybe taking down some of the makeup and books and putting up some of my work. No, um, so before we get started, why don't you introduce yourself to, to everyone who's here with us? Um, and then I got some questions I want to ask you. Sure. Uh, like you said, I'm Leon Johnson. I am a photographer. I'm originally from Washington, D.C., but, you know, the military and the military career has brought me to Augusta, Georgia. I am still active duty military and retiring this year after 21 years. Wow. And so um, I started photographing people about seven years ago. Uh, I was living, well, I was living in Germany and I was photographing a lot of bridges, a lot of buildings. And when I got back to the States, I started photographing people. Can you hear me? Now I can't. Yes. We, I lost you at the photographing people part. Okay. So yeah, I, I started photographing people and now, uh, I've developed a more art inspired uh, work that uh, is very much inspired by classical and neoclassical paintings, uh, things that you might see from the Renaissance era. And that's kind of like my jam now. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, okay, so you picked up a camera, you started photographing architecture. Um, that's understandable in Germany. I imagine the architecture there is beautiful, right? Um, so how did you transition to photographing people? Why did you go from architecture to people? So I was at a an kind of a fantasy art and comic book convention called Dragon Con. It happened, it's like Comic Con, but East Coast. It happens every year around Labor Day in Atlanta. And about 80,000 people show up. Wow. And so, um, I was with a buddy and I would always have a camera and be photographing people. And one day he said, Hey, I'm taking off. And I'm like, dude, it's like midnight. Where are you headed? And he's like, Oh, I'm going to a photo shoot. I'm going to do a photo shoot. And I was like, wow, that's interesting. And that happened in September of 2015. Mm -hmm. And the following month is when I did my first photo session. Ah, okay. Awesome. Um, I, sorry, side note. Are you into comic books? Um, for a long time I was, you know, like I'm, I'm definitely a child of the eighties. Mm -hmm. So, um, I think very much I've been inspired by some of the, what I would consider the, the movies of the eighties, like Clash of the Titans. Uh, there's a movie called Dragon Slayer, Conan the Barbarian. 
you know, a lot of very romantic, you know, epic fantasies where there's a girl in a white dress or something like that that needs saving. Right. I, I'm I'm also a comic book nerd. I don't think anybody knows that about me. I think this is the first time I'm saying it publicly. Fun fact, um, there was a comic book store here in the Bay Area and I went to them. This is while I was in college. I went to them and I was like, you guys should hire me to do all of your marketing and promotions, right? Like I just walk in and I'm like, you should hire me to do marketing and promotions. And they were like, okay, how much do you want? And I'm like, $75,000 a year. <laughs> And the owner of the store was like, whoa, you're out of your mind. And I was like, well, what if I could get a couple other, you know, what if I can get a couple other comic book stores to share in my salary? And I do marketing and promotions for all of you guys. And he was like, if you can make that happen, then yes, I will hire you. And I totally made that happen. And wow. so I did marketing and promotions for a very short amount of time. Um but it was so much fun. I had the best time. So there were four different stores that I worked for here and I got to bring in all of the artists for like artist events and signings and stuff like that. Um, and I got to go to Comic-Con every year. Right. So I did it for years and I went to Comic-Con every year. Um, Cause I, and it's fun when you're part of the actual industry, you get to go into the event before the general public comes in and it's just like industry mixing. And so I got to meet so many artists that I like loved and like looked up to and just admired greatly and actually forged friendships with them that I still have like to this day. So wow. yeah, on top of all the other stuff, I'm a, I'm a comic book nerd too. <laughs> I, I love it. Yeah. Um, okay. So that's interesting. So just by chance you one of your friends did a photo shoot and you were like well hey i want to i want to shoot people as well and yeah. it's amazing sorry i'm just gonna say it's amazing i think in the culture that we're in right now within the photography industry um people think like we so much that all you have to do is like buy this particular guide have this kit um, you know, camera kit, kit lens is fine. No 10, 15 poses. And all you have to do is know how to market your business correctly. And you will be a six figure photographer in six months. Okay. Like that doesn't happen very often if ever. Right. You and I know that. Um, so I'm about to make a statement that most people would be like, well, that's crazy, but it's not, this is like reality. The fact that you got into the business in 2015 and you're at the place that you are now is amazing. Like you're really newish to the industry, right? In some circles. And right. in, in reality, that's, you know, to start at 2015 and to be where you are right now, that's a brilliant journey. Like, You've done really, really well. That's fantastic. Um, you. Yeah. I, well, thank you for coming into the industry and creating the beautiful work that you do. Um, I think a lot of people believe that it happens like a lot faster than it does, that they don't have to build like the skills that it's just, you know, no one understands that, uh, you know, it takes years to become an overnight success. It takes years to, come, to become an overnight success. And it takes a lot of work. And I mean, so for me, I think that really in uh, one of my mentors, David Edmondson, he's a you know grandmaster of WPPI. Uh, he actually invited me to speak in Dallas, and he he did so. He says, Leon, because you're one of the most prolific photographers that I know, <laughs> and so that just means that like almost every week I'm like photographing someone, and sometimes that's to a fault. And so even like with what you were saying about where I am now. I think that people, they do have two different journeys. I think the artist journey is sometimes very different from the from the business journey. Yes. And, and sometimes, and they don't go hand in hand just because you're good at one does not mean that you're good at another. And so I, of course, I know a lot of starving artists. And so unfortunately, you know, you have to learn both sides. You have to be well-rounded and to understand not only how to create, well, if you want to make this a business, you have to understand, of course, not only how to uh, to create beautiful work, but then also to how to market yourself and, and and give people an offer. Like with what you said about the comic book company, I think that's great because a lot of times people will ask themselves, what can they get from other people? But they don't ever think about what they have to offer 
other people. And so you saw what you would like to do. And then you and then you said, well, I have these skills that would be beneficial to these companies. Hey, I'm going to go out and I'm going to go and make a pitch. And, you know, it worked out for you. But a lot of people, I think they stop at what they want, but they don't look at how they can work with other people to help them achieve their goals. Oh, my God. That's you nail on head. That's so incredibly important. You're spot on. What a what an important thing that we all need to understand. I think that we do get into a place where of what we want and not how do we fulfill what other people need as well. And that's incredibly important in being a well-rounded artist, like who is an entrepreneur also. Um, so what made you decide to to be an artist? So we we already know that you love art, right? It's not just photography. Like it's pretty clear from this conversation yeah. already that you love art. And I love that about you. That yeah. to me, I think a lot of people come into this, come into this medium because photography is so incredibly accessible. A lot of people have like this creative, you know, drive in them and they want to create of themselves. Um, but oftentimes um, we move into photography because it is so incredibly accessible, right? And maybe we don't have like, classical training. I think the majority of us photographers do not have classical art training. Right. I think that you do, whether you've had it, I believe that you do. I'm kind of guessing that you do. I don't know if it was um, self-taught or if you went to school for it, but where was it that you decided that photography was going to be the medium in which you wanted to be an artist? And then side note, do you have classical training in art? So my first career was as an engineer. I was a mechanical engineer. I went to school in, in DC and I decided I didn't like it. And so then I, I joined the military and I was a translator for 21 years. So I've, I've, I literally have not ever taken an art class, Denise. Um, I love museums. Whenever I visit a city, I make it a point to go to the fine art museum. Uh, I spend a lot of time on Pinterest, uh, kind of developing my helping. Pinterest is like my virtual assistant that helps me develop a lot of my ideas uh, and and kind of you know draw inspiration from them. Um, I do a lot of, I would think, collaboration and talking with other artists in different mediums, like painters, sketchers, and I do a lot of like you know collaboration. So I did something that was kind of based upon the Titanic movie. And so, you know, the paint me like one of your French girls, Jack. And so uh, I had a person and it was a composite. So she was both the model and she was the artist who was drawing her. But then I, I have a buddy of mine and he's an amazing uh, figure artist in Australia. And he actually drew a sketch of her and then I superimposed that onto a canvas. So it looks like the girl is painting, is kind of drawing herself. And, and I just I just think that's really clever. You know, I think it's clever yeah. to take, you know, I love like being able to composite a person in a few times into the scene, you know, and, and I think a lot of that is because I've been a one man show for, for many years. And so I've really developed a set of skills that kind of lend themselves towards like, how can I do this on my own <laughs> with, without a team and without many different people working with me? Yeah. Okay, guys, just, just a PSA. If all of a sudden I disappear, it's because I've run away with Leon and we're out at all of the museums um, <laughs> in Europe. <laughs> And around the world, just like consuming all of the art that we can consume. <laughs> Absolutely. I took a few classes in college. Um, I, you know, art history, things like that. But most of my most of my knowledge about art has been like self-taught as well. I just like uh, if I could, I would live, sleep, eat, breathe it constantly. That that's like my dream life. Like, man, that would be amazing you know so, a little secret? what was that i said do you know a little secret I, I believe that anything that you become a master of or like really good at i think ultimately it's going to be self-taught i mean even even when you look at like the phd process you i mean you have advisors but like you don't really have 
people who are teaching. You're teaching yourself at that point. You you found a rabbit hole that you want to go down and, and you're you're diving into it. And you have that advisor there to kind of keep you honest and like to to also kind of make sure that you're not, you know, uh, becoming too like going too many different directions or in keeping you focused. So yeah, I think being self-taught is definitely some if you get really good at something you you've done a lot of working on it on your own and, and teaching yourself that's a really interesting point um and yeah i think you're right you know one of the things i talk about with the art of emotion class is that um i will bring you all of the skills knowledge tools and information you need however you are going to get out of it exactly what you put into it so i can't turn into brilliant artist. That is something that you have to do. I'm going to bring you the information, but you're the one who's going to have to do the work and you will get exactly out of it what you put into it. And I suppose that's kind of being self-taught as well, like being given the information and then executing on it yourself. That's how we get there. So, okay. I know that we have taught, we've, we've had an offline conversation prior to this. It's just, you know, spoiler alert there. So I know some things that I normally don't know going into these conversations. Um, and I know that you really love photographing dancers and that that is a passion. And, uh, why don't you talk to us a little bit about that and some of your influences, um, for photographing dancers because I think it's a little bit different, not I think, I know it's different than other people who are interested in photographing dancers um, based on our conversations. So let's talk about that a little. So um, I think that I love working in general with other artists because I think that I'm a I'm the type of person who really, I'm, I'm very empathetic and I love living vicariously through the experiences of others. And so, Dance in dancers, you have another artist, um, kind of more focused on presenting and performing, uh, and I like being able to use them and to take their mat, their mastery of their art and their skill, and you know bring it into and, and capture maybe an aspect of that. Um, dancers are also very hard to photograph, you know, and the reason why is because they are all they are consummate professionals and perfectionists. Uh, many times dancers, they want to create the shot that's perfect. But for me, I want to create the shot that's perfectly imperfect, like you, like you said earlier. And so just like the painter Degas, he, he loved dancers, but rarely did he capture them like doing the, at the apex of that jump or that, or that move. But many times he, in my opinion, he captured the humanity of them. So it's maybe putting on their dancing shoes or right in the middle of an action, like where their leg is like halfway up versus like fully up. Uh, he also, from his perspective, he captured them from the wings of the performance, not like from the audience. And, not, you know, and so perspective is important as well. Uh, so in, in that respect, dancers always, I think that they, I think artists in general, I think that they always can appreciate what you do because they know how much they put into their work. And so it's really great to come, to come along with someone who really feels important about what they do and then to be able to respect their mastery and to respect their artistry as well. And, and it's reciprocal. Yeah. I love that you draw so much inspiration from the other arts, like all of the beautiful arts around you to create your art. That is a very unique thing about you. That is not, when we talk to photographers, artists who are working within this medium, um, we don't hear a lot how you, that they bring in the other arts to be inspired. And I think that's such an incredibly important thing that as artists ourselves, we can be doing. Like we don't Absolutely. have to just look in the photography industry for our inspiration. As a matter of fact, I think it's a bit of a Achilles heel for us. We look at other photographers work and that's where the majority of our inspiration as photographers comes from. And I think we're doing ourselves a huge disservice by not looking outside of this industry and looking at other art forms, whether it be comic books, 
I mean, as simple as that, whether it be, you know, brilliant directors, um, amazing cinematographers, um, musicians, for goodness sakes, like them as well, the way that they perform, dancers, writers, poets, um, classical painters, they all have so like such a wealth of like humanity and beauty to share with us that we can be pulling in as inspiration. So that's one thing that people I've heard people say, well, if you want to be one type of photographer, start following photographers in a different genre of photography. But we always ask, and so something you mentioned is something that I always teach with, even with my students is that, well, you know, you, you ask yourself, well, what are the, what can, how do we draw inspiration from other sources? Uh, I think that we can all look at components and characteristics of different media and then think to ourselves, what is it that I want to bring from that inside inside of my work? I think very early on, I was inspired by the HBO series Rome. And so I looked at Rome and I, I really loved like their classical garments that were like, you know, natural and they showed like the decolletage and, you know, the shoulders and collarbones. And I just liked the natural look and feel of it. And so I knew that that, that was something that I wanted to bring into, into my work. Uh, you talked about literature. And I mean, I've done a number of series based upon Hamlet's or Shakespeare's uh, Ophelia in, in Hamlet. Um, uh, we mentioned like, you know, Dragon Slayer and like, you know, uh, you know girls or women in, in white dresses. I mean, there's so many things that you can kind of, you know, maybe, maybe you're not like creating it like 100%, but you can actually draw some component or some criteria and borrow it from another artist when you look at like for me i like uh the painter what can i learn from i love his poses but also i learned his colors i'm the colors so like i take uh i look at other painters and find out what works for them and then say well you know if it worked for them it'll work for me and so yeah. the, you don't have to try to create something 100%, but you can always learn maybe a small thing from someone else. Yeah, 100%. I recently did two projects that um, everyone was like, what do you, like once I was doing it, they were like, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm having fun, leave me alone. I'm just, I'm gonna go ahead and do this. My team was like, this isn't on brand. And I was like, I don't care about on brand right now. I just wanna have a good time. So um, I did, uh, there's a silent film, French silent film called Irma Vep. And um, she was the first female villain ever in cinema. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to do, I wanted to do a shoot that was kind of like around that, like her character. And I had so much fun with it. It was amazing. And then recently I also wanted to, and this is really stepping outside of what I normally shoot. Um, I was working on stuff for class and I was looking at a lot of the Fauvist and, you know, that's impressionism, like really pushed to the edge with like crazy colors, right? Just crazy bright colors. And I was like, you know, and I was so inspired by the colors in it. I was like, I want to do this shoot. That's like a, a, you know, dark pink backdrop with a red dress and like hot pinks and fuchsias and just all these wild colors. And if it worked for them, why can't it work for me? And everyone was like, oh, you can't put those colors together. And that does not match your brand. And people are going to be like, what are you doing? And I was like, I don't care. It, it works. I'm going to do this. And I executed it and it worked beautifully. And I was super happy with it. It's not on brand, but I don't care. Like I was so inspired by one painting in particular that I was like, I really just want to create with these colors. And so, yeah, things as simple as like color palettes that people have used. Um, and again, another PSA, if I disappear, you guys, it's because I've run away with him because <laughs> this sounds amazing being inspired by literature and all of the beautiful things that you're talking about. Like, it's so refreshing to talk to a fellow artist who is working in this medium that is inspired by things outside of it. And boy, guys, if you take anything away from this call today, it's that start looking outside of the industry and start looking at the other mediums of art where you can be like inspired. And like Leon said, you don't have to take all of it. It's not like a full creation. The shoot that I did that I just used the colors had looked nothing. It was nothing to do with 
the Favis movement at all. I was just like, these colors are talking to me. They are like making my heart happy. Like they're beautiful. I'm going to do this. Like, and it I came out beautiful. It was wonderful. So we all need to do that. So now I'm done with the nice questions. I'm going to go in with the hard questions. Uh -oh. <laughs> Leon, here we go. I want to hear about a time where, because a lot of us are afraid to like make a mistake. We think if we make a mistake, the mistake is who we are, right? So, or if we fail, failure is who we are. When failure is not a noun, it is a verb. Mistake is not a noun. It is a verb, right? It is. It doesn't define who we are. Um, but as creatives, we're real sensitive to that, right? Like that's like, oh, if we make a mistake, like uh, we're, we're that mistake as opposed to like letting it be. So has there been a time since you've started this journey being an artist in this medium where you've had... It just a colossal failure, or maybe not even a colossal failure, just a failure or a mistake that led to a place of like immense growth for you. And how do you feel about a follow up question to that? How do you feel about making those mistakes and failures? Right. So I think that my probably like my upbringing as a scientist and as an engineer has kind of given me a different approach. So I approach new things from a very, from a very scientific perspective. Um, in other words, I try a thing. It, I mean, we all, if you grew up in the 80s, you probably remember the scientific method. You want to do something, okay? You try it. You're going to, something's going to work, something's not going to work. Okay, the things, you know, many people would, would label the things that don't work as failures. Uh, but, you know, those failures are, you should really look at them as a stepping point onto when I have this experiment the next time, what will I do differently and how will I expect, you know, the result to change? And so uh, I think that for me, when whenever you see these works, even like this one behind me, um, they are the result of uh, many iterations of of me in the studio. Like I said, I would I would photograph people, you know, multiple times a week sometimes, just because I like doing it. And like I this year, I've definitely taken over 30, 40,000 photos already. Um, but of course, I can't post. <laughs> I can't post. I can't. First of all, I can't edit that many, and I can't post that many. <laughs> but uh, I'm just saying. If, COVID came back, if something like COVID, God forbid, came back, I literally could go like another year and still produce stuff that is that people are like, oh, Leon's still working. <laughs> so I have <laughs> such a you know repository of, of things. But I've definitely failed in trying to uh, achieve certain. So when I started out like creating like these uh, painterly, what I would consider painterly works. Um, I actually started out because, you know, I have a f some different influences. One, I really liked at the time, like the landscape work of a guy. He's a Parisian uh, photographer. His name is Serge Ramelli. And he he's on YouTube. So it's S-C-R-G-E Ramelli, R-A-M-E-L-L-I. He's on YouTube and has some great like landscape photography instruction. But I loved his work. Um, and then also at the same time, I was working, like if you've seen the movie Frozen, there was a group of people, there was a one uh, instructor out there who was teaching people to kind of create images that looked like, you know, they were from a cartoon, you know, like a, a girl giving, uh, compositing an, an apple, giving it to a moose or something like that. And so I started with... Uh, Andrea Black is her name. And I, and I started off with her. her. Her group was called Catching Whimsy. And I was taking all of the different techniques and the tac tactics that she you know, employed, but I wasn't quite getting it. You know? And so what I did was I took some of those techniques and those tactics and I kind of said, well, you know what? I'm going to try taking those and then applying them to my style of portraiture. And I developed a few other techniques along with it. And that led to where I am now in creating and how I and how I edit and how I am developing like my color theory and harmony in my work. And so 
Definitely. If you look at, if you thought that success was trying to create an image like Andrea, then I'm still a failure. But if your success criteria is like, well, I'm going to learn some of these techniques and then how to employ them, then definitely it then became a success. And, you know, from that, I went and created something that was my own, you know? And so, like I said, failure is often, you know, you're learning how it either can't be done or you're learning a different way or you're learning something totally new. And in my case, it was like all three, like, well, I guess I can't do that, but I've learned this other thing I can apply and go down my own rabbit hole with. So, you know, I don't, I don't ever feel like a failure artistically. Artistically, I never feel like a failure because I'm, I'm still having fun. I'm still having fun creating beautiful romantic images. I'm still having fun helping people um, see themselves beautifully and artistically. And I'm having fun just, just out there uh, inspiring people to do something that they've never done before and, and inspiring them to take a chance and to fail, you know? Yeah. So I, I think your the scientific approach, I think, is incredibly important. Um, it's, you know, I never even thought to talk about that. But that's, I think, if we were to apply that to our work as artists, that does kind of alleviate the stress of, like, having to be perfect. If we understand that it is, like, you try something to actually see what the results of it are. And then you know exactly what to do and what not to do the next time. Then you go in and you do it the next time and you're going to learn even more what not to do and what to do. And it just keeps, it continues evolving. Another thing that I'm getting from you right now is, and this is so incredibly beautiful. Now the PSA, if I were, if I go missing, it's because I've run away to go explore art with him. Um, you have such a sense of, childlike curiosity and playfulness that is incredible that well we don't see that a lot in what we're doing and i think the reason we don't see that a lot leon is because of the messaging that we're getting within the industry that we need to be a six-figure photographer in six months when we get started and so we lose that childlike playfulness and curiosity that is at the heart of creating beautiful works of art. And I don't know how you get to that six figures without having those two things. They're incredibly important. And thank you so much for sharing that. That's that's such a beautiful thing. And again, everyone who's listening, like take that to heart. It's incredible to love what we're doing and not let it turn into just an absolute grind to get to that destination. I always say, Leon, one of my favorite, one of my favorite Denise-isms, I suppose, is that we're, we're either living or we're dying. We're doing one or the other. And if we are present and on the journey, then we're actually living. Mm -hmm. And if we're moving towards that destination, we're dying. And, and at all times, each one of us, we're doing both of those things, whether we're an artist or not. We are in the process of living and we are in the process of dying. And it's our choice. Do we want to live or do we want to be dying? And I think holding on to that, that curiosity, that, that playfulness, which I think society tries to like beat that out of us. You're not supposed to be curious and you're supposed to, you're not supposed to be playful. You need to be an adult, right? You need to get it done. You need to be strong. You need to push forward. You need to be serious. You need to get down to it. Right. And, and as we grow up, we lose that. And so I think there's so much to be said for the Peter Pans in the world, the people who adult, but refuse to grow up. Right. Maintain that beautiful curiosity about life and, and humanity and whatever it is that like makes them happy and sets their soul and their heart on fire. And I feel so much of that with you and it makes me so happy. It's a beautiful thing. So I, I think that definitely one thing that I that I feel and I, and I think that I'm learning is that I think that in order to learn, you have to have the spark of curiosity. Yeah. You have to want you have to be curious about what happens if I do this. You have to ask that you have to have that question out there. And 
Uh, I think that sometimes getting to that six figure uh, point is that is where you you've asked yourself and you've learned and you know getting to six figures is then employing the things that you learned. Um, I think that sometimes it's kind of, you know, so I was listening to, I went to WPPI and I listened to uh, a, a, an amazing Australian photographer, Farooq Yabari, and she's just amazing. She's a person photographer living in, an, in Australia. And she talked about how with her personal work, sometimes it might take six months, maybe it could take six years for her to create and, and a piece. And she talked about like how she always like hires her models when she wants to create something for herself. And I was like, that's brilliant. The reason why is because, okay, when you, when you hire a person, then you're hiring them for their time or their service. And you don't really have, you don't really owe them anything because you've already, you've paid them for their time. But many times you can't do that. It's really tough to do that commercially where you, where someone just commissions you and it's open ended, like as far as time or as far as result. Many times when people pay you to do something, they want a they want they want a specific result. You know, they want to guide you in into what they want. And so it really is a, a sort of collaboration. And so many times Many times when I have a client who comes to me and they want to be a part of my work, um, it's sometimes it's rare, I think, that people just want me to create something with them. Many times they have a, a, a vision already in mind. And so it, you know, they also taking part of the artistic process of that, in that respect. So where am I going with this? I'm, I'm the king of like tangents, but um, I think that it's really rare to have a, a client also who where you where you're able to give 100% of your artistry because ultimately you you are, you know, kind of making yourself susceptible to what they want from the project. But many times you can, you know, and so sometimes the way that I get around that, and I'm talking to myself, I'm having a conversation, but is that, you know, Denise, I know that you love my work. And so, you know, many, t like, if you were to ask me, well, Leon, like, how would you like to photograph me? And, you know, for, for me, maybe that is a point where I can then, like, you know, generate, you know, five different concepts and then say, this is how I would photograph you. And then, like, having you choose which one of those concepts, you know, you're really like, like, wow, I really love that, you know? And that way you kind of are able to retain maybe some of your own authenticity rather than, like, if you came to me and said, Leon, how would you photograph this polka dot dress? I'd be like, I wouldn't. <laughs> but, but, I, but definitely, like, I think that but maybe by giving, you know, those options that way, you can, you can, you can kind of, as an artist, kind of maintain like more control, more artistic control over that process. Yeah. That was a tangent. Let's call it what it was, but. <laughs> no, and I think there's a, there's a couple of points that I want to pick out of there. Um, one of them is I think as creative entrepreneurs, um, we, we are commissioned, right? And our clients do have an expectation and there actually is an incredible art in collaborating with our clients. Right. Absolutely. So that's an art form in and of itself, right? But if we do enough of that, we start getting burnt out, mm -hmm. right? When we're not, if we're really creatives, if we're doing this because we really love creating of ourselves, if we do enough of that, we get so burnt out that we start losing the, the passion and the curiosity and the childlike playfulness and all of those beautiful things unless we start doing some personal projects. So there's room for both. They can live harmoniously together. 
you can create like, you know, again, there's an art to working collaboratively with your clients. And I, you know, I've said that for, I've said that forever. When we are portrait artists who are being commissioned by clients, we're not Picasso who refused to take any commissions except for that mural that the communist party talked him into painting that he, it was the bane of his existence. It was his one and only commission. And it was probably the thing he became the most well-known for. And he hated it. He hated it absolutely hated that fact so we're not all sitting around like picasso like we're not going to take commissions the fact of the matter is the reality is we are taking commissions so we have to find an art in collaborating with clients and i think part of that is being learning to be authentic authentic and creating work that is authentic to you so that you are attracting the right type of client so if i were to come to you because i love your work I would feel comfortable knowing that say when you come to me, let's say, okay. when. <laughs> yeah, well, we all know I'm running away with him now. We, I mean, that's just clear, right? I'm going to disappear and just go into art world forever. Um, when we work together, I know that it's going to be an art of collaboration, right? And so if we, if we put out our authentic work and work with our clients in that way, I think it becomes a little less taxing on us, like as creatives. Um, but I also think there's like the importance for personal projects, which is why another reason we're doing this 14 day photo artist journey. It's about playing. It's about finding your style, your vision, reigniting your passion to create and understanding that if you want to show up magnificently for your clients, you have to start by showing up magnificently for yourself. And that means creating work of yourself that you absolutely love and sets you on fire. Like it just lights you up and makes you happy. If we lose that as artists who are commissioned, we lose our interest in running our business. We get burnt out. Our clients do not get the kind of work that they should be getting from us. Nobody wins. It's just, it's a lose all the way around. So it's a, it's a finding a balance. And again, there's going to be mistakes in the way that we do this. We're going to fail in doing it, but that's okay because we're going to use a scientific, you know, process and we're going to test and iterate what works and what doesn't work. And we'll create that balance for ourselves. And again, if we're working those first three phases, that vision and that balance is going to change over time. It's mine. Has changed immensely. Yeah. I will no longer shoot things that I'm shooting just because I think they're going to be palatable for the masses. I won't do it. I'm only going to shoot the way that I want to shoot from now on. I made that decision a couple of weeks ago and I'm sticking to it. Like that's it. I'm done. I, and the people who want to work with me will work with me and the people who don't will work with someone else. And that's fine. I'm going to be happy and I am going to show up more magnificently for my clients because I'm going to be showing up for myself now. So that tangent was important. We got a couple of really good things out of that, I think. Um, I want people to know where they can find you. Okay. So uh, I'm on Facebook, of course, Leon Johnson. Um, I'm also on Instagram. Um, my Instagram handle for my portraits is uh, LJ Portraits. So it's like Leon Johnson, but it's LJ Portraits. I'm going to put um, it here for them right now. Uh, also, uh, I have my website is uh, www.leonjohnsonphotography.org. And I am also an ambassador for Stella Lights. Stella Lights, they make these amazing constant lights and they do biking lights and diving lights, but they make these amazing uh, constant lights for photographers. And for me, uh, using those lights is a great, you know, for me, it was a great stepping off point from going from a natural light photographer to someone who um, is using artificial light because pretty much what you see is what you get. Uh, so enjoy. I'm usually at most of the, you know, major photography conferences for that reason as well. As well. 
Yeah, I am super excited. So I just put your information in there for them. Also, you guys, he's also part of the Art of Emotion group. So he's in the group with us. And he's actually going to be in this next iteration of the Art of Emotion stripped down. So he's going to be joining us in class. So he'll be in class with us this iteration. So that's going to be really exciting. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, I want to talk about lighting now because I suck at it. I'm ter okay. horrible, horrible, awful. Um, I paint beautifully with natural light. I have not mastered artificial light at all. I just bought my first, um, I mean, I have constants in my studio, um, that I use if I absolutely have to, usually they get in my way and I'm mad at them. Like I just want to knock them over and smash. <laughs> yeah, it's like oh, smash when I have to use lights. I get pissed. I really do. I don't like them. <laughs> I don't know what that block is. I need to work on that, but I am working on that. I did buy my first kit by Stella. Um, Kiate talked me into it. We were at WPPI and I was like, artificial lights, strobes, you know, I'm so irritated with, right? I'm like, they just don't work with the way that I shoot. Like, I don't like them. I don't want to do it. Like, like I shoot on rapid fire. Like I'm in burst mode all the time and they can't keep up with me. And I'm not going to go moving lights and changing settings, blah, 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 all this stuff, right? I want the connection between me and my subject to keep flowing. I don't want this shit to get in my way, right? And so he's like, hold on. And he puts down his backpack and within not even five minutes, three to four minutes, he had everything set up and he pointed his camera at me and he held his light in the other hand and he hit the shutter and that flash like kept up with the camera and i was like okay i'm sold like that's all he had to do i was like okay okay where's the stella booth take me in there i'll buy them right now um and i literally did i bought them like on the spot I haven't opened them and started playing with them because I'm still like, oof, I'm scared of them, right? right. But, oh, I need to run towards that failure. Oh, man, I need to run towards it real fast so I can get past it. Um, what type of modifier do you have? What type of what? Modifier, like light modifier. I don't know. I, okay. I don't know. I don't even know. I bought the I bought the the kits that they have, and I it had three different modifiers for it. Yeah. Get it, um, get a, get a simple shoot through umbrella, okay. and get, one, get a large one. Get one that's like at least forty eight inches. Okay. And when you're and just move it around. You know, keep your subject in the same spot. Move it around, and work on getting really large, beautiful catch lights in their eyes. Okay. And and I think that when you when you have like those big large catch lights in the eyes, then your light is is close enough to your subject, and you're also going to get a very beautiful soft light. Okay. And so I think that you'll see that you know, if, and that that's kind of a way to kind of get to the point where because I I see a lot of people who like I, I do some coaching, and so I see people who. You know, maybe when they are lighting, like they try to light like me, but then it's like I can look at those catch lights and they're like little pinpoints, which means that either they are not using a large enough modifier or that the modifier is so far away. Right. And so uh, you bring that modifier in close, you make, you know, a large, uh, a large light source close to, close to the subject is going to be very soft. And catch lights for me are everything. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. That's like something that I always look for, you know, when I'm shooting is like, you know, what do the catch lights look like? Because that it really gives you, brings the life into the eyes and, and you know, makes them sparkle and, and makes you feel like you're interacting with your subject, you know? Yeah. Do you want to hear, so that all sounds beautiful and it sounds uh -huh. exactly the opposite way that I want to go. Uh -huh. <laughs> Uh -huh. So I think a lot of photographers here listening to this are like, yeah, that's what I want. But and this is going to sound kind of weird. You know what? In, you know what's inspiring me about using artificial lighting? Uh, graffiti. Graffiti. Okay. So like the graffiti scene in New York in the late seventies. Uh -huh. Like the whole art scene in New York in the late seventies. The Factory, Warhol and the Factory, um, hip hop, uh, graffiti. Um, punk rock, like all of the cultural stuff that was happening in New York in the 70s feels like so punchy 
and so vibrant and so just like uh arresting and kind of like urgent right and right. and that's what's inspiring me to want to use our artificial light right now is i right. want to capture that uh, that quick burst feeling of like urgency and and brightness and intensity and so I think I'm wanting to go the opposite direction of something soft and pretty. And I'm wanting to go punchy and hard because I'm so inspired right now by like that whole, like how everything came together in New York during that time, all of these such different cultural things happened and created this amazing art scene. Right. And the whole feeling of it was like this birth of like all of these new things that were wild and bright. And, and so I'm, yeah, I, I will see what I will see what I do with it. Who knows? I might end up going softer, but definitely that. Johnny Edward, he's another amazing photographer. And we talk all the time, like, you know, like for me, I, I think that I love soft light and it's something that I love. But you know, I've all I've tried a few sessions where I've done, I've been using hard light, and so you, I think it's always cool to kind of, you know, we talk about niching down all the time, but you know, I think that really I prefer to kind of embrace my heart and my creative spirit, and so, you know, like you talked about someone when you did wanted to do a, a kind of a personal project, they're like, well, that's off brand, but you know, you're the brand. It's not like you know, like it's how you edit and 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 all of these other things are not the brand in my opinion it's like it's like that creative spirit and what you're trying to capture from your subject that i think that's the brand yeah i think so too and i think being well rounded like you said clearly i love soft light too that's why i use that's why i'm a natural light shooter right and I was recently in that Pro Prince Legends uh, competition, and okay. everybody who was out there had lights with them to help them fill out in that desert light. Uh -huh. And I was like the one lone shooter who was out there with just like my one body and my one lens. That's all I went there with. I was like, I'm like, you know? <laughs> um, and boy, I wish I would have had a more well-rounded skill set in that competition because if I would have known how to use like a soft light to fill in some places, it would have helped me immensely. Like in that moment, I was like, damn, Denise, you really need to up your game. Like, if you had a big reflector, that could have done the same as well. Yeah. But yeah. And no, I was just going to go. I was, you know, I'm a natural light shooter. That's the way I'm going to do it. <laughs> but a well-rounded shooter who has like all of the skills in my arsenal that I need. That's super important. I look up to you guys who have mastered lighting so much. And I think the reason I have so much admiration and respect for you is because I know it is a skill set that I need to develop. And so we always look to others who have those skill sets, right? That we That's always greener, right? <laughs> well, I mean, I think in this case, it, it literally is, right? It's a skill set that I tremendously admire. And painting, I mean, photography is literally, literally painting with light. That is right. what we do, right? Um, that is the base of what we do. We are painting with light. And so learning how to control natural light, but also learning how to control artificial light to either supplement that natural light that you're working with and or to replace it so that you have full control over your lighting. Man, that's a superpower right there. That is that is a superpower, and that's one that I want in my back pocket. I want <laughs> so I'm gonna run towards that failure, Leon. I'm running towards that failure, and I'm gonna go I again. Wait. I would love to see, e even if you don't share it like publicly, I, I would love to see like you know some of your failures. Oh, I'm totally gonna share it publicly. <laughs> um, I'm gonna work with Kiate, and I think I might ask you for some support in it too. So I might ask you for some mentoring in using light. So yeah, I, I plan to like video my entire journey of falling down and skinning my knees and getting back up and going until I've gotten to where I want to get. Because again, I want to humanize the journey and let everybody see like, not only am I not perfect, well, we already all know that, <laughs> but the beauty of the journey and that if I can do it, a person who is like so terrified of light and, and irritate, I'm actually even irritated by it. Like it makes me angry. I don't know where that comes from, but I just don't like it. Um, I'm going to lean into all of that and I am going to make mistakes, but I'm going to come out the other side, being able to control that shit 
and use it beautifully. And I'm really excited about it. I'm really excited about sucking at it until I'm good at it. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. You can, see what, you can see past that and use it because you know that, you know, doing it and, and not and having it not be everything that you, you know, not succeeding in every area is yeah. the route to succeeding, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm excited about it. I'm looking forward to it. This is going to be part of me running. When when we do do this mentorship, can we just go to a museum as well? Like Absolutely. Okay, okay, good. Good, good, good. good. Uh, we're going to have to trade shoots too. Like I absolutely want to photograph you. So we're going to have to we're going to have to back and forth this as well. Absolutely. I want to thank you so much for coming on and speaking with me today. I think this is my pleasure. A brilliant conversation. I hope it's not the last one. I hope to talk to Well, I mean, I know it's not the last one personally. But publicly, publicly, I hope that we can do this again. Personally, you're not getting rid of me. You you don't get to shake me. Um, so I'll be talking to you very soon. But hopefully, we can we can come on and we can talk again together and share more with the audience. I am looking forward to seeing you in class. I am really grateful that you were here. Um, are there any projects or anything that you want to talk about that the audience should know about? So we talked about personal projects, and so I am starting a project called "The Body Is Beautiful." bodies are beautiful project. And so definitely like, I think a lot of my clients are people who have not had historically or traditionally seen themselves as beautiful as feminine or what have you. And many people are going through a process where they are aware of that and they want to start embracing who they are now and not necessarily trying to get back to who they were when they were 20 years old or like the body of, you know, of when they were in their, you know, quote unquote prime. And so I think that I'm one of those people that I see beauty in everyone. And so it's like, there's beauty in every age and every like part of the cycle. There's beauty in being the girl and being the mother and being the grandmother and being the old wizened, you know, woman. Uh, and so what the body bodies are beautiful is a project for me to to help other people embrace that and and also tell the story of some of these people so each like the project will produce a a book it's like a coffee table book and on one side you'll have a portrait of uh the person and then on the other hand on the other side the other facing page you'll have a their story basically talking about their process and their journey of self-love and and learning to love themselves and the body that they're in now versus I hear so much of like, I'll be happy as soon as I can lose 10 pounds. But it's like, where else do we do that? Where, where we kind of constrain our happiness to something that we're not going to enjoy, you know? So it's like, why not love ourselves now and do things that will make us love ourselves more. And, you know, and I think that we should love ourselves whether we lose that 10 pounds. Because how many clients have come to you and said, I'm going to book you as soon as I <laughs> as soon as I lose these, these pounds. And it's like, you're, you're beautiful now. Why not? You know, so yeah. uh, that's what I'm working on. And I'm excited because it's both a personal project. And some of these people are going to be my clients, too. So I'm really excited to see what we do. I'm excited to see it as well. It's an important thing. I think so many of us women, um, men as well, we struggle with this so greatly. Um, it's not um, unpublic knowledge that I have severe disorders um, and body morphia issues uh -huh. or body dysmorphia issues. So to me, that's a project that I'm like totally on board with for you. I would never be part of it, but I'm on board that you're actually doing that. I'm still working <laughs> through all of those things myself personally, but thank you for doing that. That's such yeah. an important thing to do. Well, so I, I, I want to say publicly that I still see the dancer in you, Denise. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you very much, sir. Thank yeah. you for noticing. Um, I, I think it's one of those things we've talked about this. It never leaves, right? It's the, it never leaves. It's a part yeah, of you. It, is, it does become a part of you. It is the way that you move. It is, it's the way that you feel. I think it's also the way that you see. It becomes yeah. so much a part of who you are. I think it's a big reason I am the photographer that I am. The way that I capture other people the way that I do was because of dancing and all of the hands and the movements and stuff, they're all still there. It doesn't, it doesn't go away. Um, 
And it is a beautiful part of me. Thank you. I'm going to say that to myself. So it is a beautiful part of me. So thank you very much. I appreciate that. I have enjoyed this conversation immensely. Every time we have a conversation, I enjoy it immensely. Thank you so much for sharing your, your curiosity and your playfulness and your knowledge and your talent and all of your beauty with us today. I greatly appreciate it. Um, you guys can give him a follow on Instagram. Um, go check out his website. Be on the lookout for that project. And you guys are who are in class, you'll be seeing him in class with us. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Okay, my love. Thank you. For, oh, wait, I have to announce the one. I'm like so excited about our conversation. I'm like forgetting that I have to announce the winner of the of the print. And so let's see. Um, it's so awesome that uh, Pro Prince is doing this. I'm so stoked that they're doing this for our audience. So the winner of the 32 by 48. Yep, 32 by 48 is uh kaylin amelia kaylin are you yeah. no, we got to make sure that she's still here so let's see okay there's a little bit of a lag so kaylin let us know that you're still with us yes yeah, it's here woohoo congratulations sweetheart congratulations to you and everybody else, I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. Um, I will see you back again tomorrow for our final day. Start getting ready for those submissions. And um, go give Mr. Johnson a follow. His work is absolutely stunning. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm so grateful for your time. Glad to have this conversation with you and looking forward to many more. Thank you. Okay, kids, have a wonderful day. Go brilliant and do something beautiful. Go be curious and playful too. Do that. Yes. Not today. Do it all. <laughs> Go have fun. Okay. Do it now. <laughs> See you guys later.